hour. That said, just as if you were driving around the Beltway and there were an accident, we live in the D.C. area, it has terrible traffic. Sometimes our drivers are stuck and our dispatchers have to get another vehicle out to the customer because someone is stuck coming around the Beltway from Maryland to Virginia or from um, somewhere out in the burbs into the city. And there was a, a backup on one of the roadways. Uh, other times, you know, there, there are different reasons, but yes, it does happen. And it's really important that we as customers be very communicative with Metro. So there are numbers you will be given if you become eligible and choose to use the service where you can call and there's a where's my ride. Uh, you can text for where's my ride. So even if you're home and you're getting ready to go to your lobby, um, if you're in a building, you can check where's my ride via text and someone will write back uh, that it's 15 minutes away or such. But you might have to wait a moment because that's handled by humans. It's not handled by a computer. So uh, the other thing to do is to say, where's my ride? You don't make that phone call. There's a where's my ride phone number as well. You don't make that call till the end of your window. At the end of your window, if you've waited half an hour, you can say, my ride has not arrived. I've been waiting since the beginning of my window. Can you please tell me the ETA what's going on? And they can research sometimes, depending on the circumstances of the individual and what kind of a vehicle they need, um, they will send out uh, a cab or an Uber or a, um, I don't think they send Lyft, but they'll send a contracted vehicle. But for some uh, some of the time that that will work and some of the time it won't because there are only a certain number of accessible vehicles. We wanna make sure that our customers have the vehicle that they need. So it's a long-winded way of saying, sure, there are times that this still happens and it's something you need to be prepared for. I always suggest to people, this is one tool in the toolbox and it's a good tool, but there are issues with it as there can be issues with a train breaking down or a car being stuck in traffic. Um, so we learn ways to to deal with that and to, to cope. And depending on where you're going, um, you might wanna to plan to get there a little earlier build some cushion time into your reservation making. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to how to apply for a moment, how you're found eligible. Um, if you choose to apply, there is a Metro Access application form that is quite lengthy. The portion for you as the applicant to fill out isn't that long. It's basically your, your name, address, phone number, uh, emergency contact, that sort of thing. You need to sign and date that form and then have your healthcare provider fill out part B. That's the long part. It's really the heavy lifting is done by your healthcare provider. So whichever caregiver you're seeing for your particular disabling condition, what's causing you to function or not function in a manner that lets you get to the bus and the train, the folks at Metro want to hear from your doctor. So I, when I put my application in, I, I go to an eye specialist, an eye care specialist. Some folks go to their primary care doctor, their internist. Other folks will go um, to a neurologist, all depending on what the area of your um, disabling condition is and who you think is best able to fill that form out um, to be knowledgeable about how it affects you. And then once that form is completely filled out, signed and dated by you, signed and dated by the physician, it can be sent to us in several ways. It can be emailed to eligibility at wamata.com. That is the easiest way to send it. But you don't wanna send just the application. If you're gonna do your application online, you would send the application form and two JPEG photo pictures. One would be a photo of the front of your 
ID card or driver's license, or it could be a passport, um, green card, any government issued identification card that is current, that is not expired. That's just keeping you from having to come in and show it to us yourself. We take a picture of that and that's proof that you are who you say you are. And um, the second one would be a headshot. Just uh, you can take it of yourself. Uh, you can have a friend take one, or if you already have a headshot, just get it to us in a, in a JPEG format. So the easiest thing to do is snap these on your phone, attach them to the PDF scanned document of your, of your application. Some people love this process. I'll tell you, it is the most efficient. You have a record, you have um, a brief little note you'll get at the top of your email that says, you know, receive Transit Accessibility Center. That is the way I highly recommend people apply and you can always call me. I'm gonna give you my number right now. My name is Bridget, B-R-I-G-I-D. You can call me with questions or concerns about any of this process on 202-570-2447. I'll say it one more time, 202-570-2447. I know this is a lot to say um, and a lot to take in. So if you have questions, you can call me. That is my Metro cell phone. Some days I am teaching, I'm out doing travel training, and I won't be able to get back to you until the following day. Um, if you need an immediate answer, go ahead and call the Transit Accessibility Center and choose option number five. They can, they can also talk you through it. But if, if you'd like to chat a little bit, I'm here, I'm available It's part of my job, and I'm happy to talk with you, to speak with you. So that's one way to apply. You can send it to us via email, eligibility at wmata.com with the form and the two photos. Another way to apply, you can hand carry it in to our Longfont Plaza office if you so choose. Um, another way is to fax it, which I recommend is not the best way to do it. I really, I'm not a fan of faxes, but if that's all that your doctor's office is willing to do, um, then that's, but the, the problem with that is if the doctor's office faxes it and we need your pictures, it's not a complete application unless we have all three items, the pictures and the application. So I really, I mentioned the fax because I'm supposed to mention the fax, but I encourage you not to fax it. You can also send it by mail. And the address is on our website. I'm I'm sorry, my phone is vibrating and I'm needed to move it away from me. <laughs> you can um, mail it to us. The address is on the application is what I'm trying to say. Um, and that that will work as well. But again, you need to get the pictures to us. So I really find if, if you have an inability to scan it, and I know I have friends younger and friends older than I who don't have scanners who are not able to do the computer piece, and I get it. Um, but see if a friend or a family member, a community member can help you. If not, come on down to the office might be the best way to do it. And if you can't come on down to the office, call me and we'll, we'll figure out a way for you to, to get it to us. It used to be that when folks applied, they automatically came to our office for an interview. And you would see one of my colleagues who would ask you some questions and they might do a, um, a bit of an assessment where you would do some walking. And these assessments are all done by folks who are uh, occupational therapists and they would make an eligibility determination. The determination is made based upon what you say uh, based upon what your doctor puts on the paper, and in that case, the assessment. We are not doing a lot of in-person assessments these days. We're trying to, to make it easier on everyone. Uh, every now and then, we get an application where it's just so iffy, but the person really feels strongly they need it, 
So they, they will ask you to come in for an in-person assessment. You don't have to pay for that ride. Metro will send a vehicle to you on a day and time that works for you. And they will provide you with the assessment and send you home, no cost to you during the application process at all. So that's it for the application process. And then I can talk more about the program and how it works, but let me check in and if there are any questions uh, or what people would prefer to hear. There are some questions. Um, okay. uh, first, I would like to ask, it, do you have any slides that you could share about the application process? Or, I do. Uh, okay. Are you I do. sharing them now or can you send them to me and I can like get them to people who want them or? I'll be, it would be easier to send them to you. I could share them now, but I, um, if you don't mind, can I send them to you? Yeah, or, okay, that would be great. And everyone who wants a copy of it, just say, just tell me in the, um, in the chat and I should have your emails from the Zoom, okay? Um, first question is, is this type of transport only good for trips to doctors or hospitals or is it good for other venues as well? Great question. It is good for anywhere you might take a bus or a train. If you want to go to the Kennedy Center, you go to the Kennedy Center. You, okay, anywhere you might take a bus or a train, which implies that a metro bus or metro train goes there. So the reality is you can go anywhere you choose. It can be a friend's house. It can be a Christmas party. It can be um, your synagogue. It can be anywhere you choose to go. Um, as long as that destination is within our service area. Our service area is determined by being within three quarters of a mile of a bus stop or a train that's running at that hour. So if you want to go to Bowie to see a friend, that's fine. We serve the Bowie area. But you will call the Metro Access Reservations line to be sure that in that part, part of Bowie, there is a bus stop three quarters of a mile from your friend's home where you want to go visit. So it's pretty wide ranging. And it, we also partner with Fairfax County buses, Montgomery County buses, PG County buses, and um, we pattern our trips also on the Arlington County and the city of Alexandria, city of Fairfax. All those regional partners, as long as they're partners with us, we will go within three quarters of a mile of their stop or ours. So yeah, great question. You can go where you would like to go in terms of activity. You can go to dinner, you can go to a play. Um, okay. Yes. And let's see. Does emailing the application and photo replace the visit to WMATA? It is the best way to begin in my opinion most often does replace the visit. Every now and then, as I mentioned earlier, there will be something on the application uh, from the doctor. Every now and then a doctor will fill out an application saying the person doesn't need this. But by virtue of the fact that you're applying for the service, our thinking is you believe you need it. So in that kind of an example, you might get a call from one of my colleagues saying, we'd really love for you to come in. They might chat with you on the phone. They might have you come in for an assessment. Okay. But for the most part, uh, assessments are, are, that could change at any time, but the assessments are not being done in person with a huge uh, volume. The way it used to be, every single individual was seen in person, not any longer. About how long does it take to get approved if you submit the application online? Three uh, three weeks to, to have the approval processed. However, it might be another week or so before you get your card or cards in the mail. And um, it's another reason why I think it's great to do it by email if possible, because then you have everything right there, the date that you sent the email 
And when people say, well, we, you know, if for some reason it fell through the cracks, we didn't receive it to say, oh, well, here it is. I sent it on such and such a day. So we can expedite getting that corrected and in, into the system. Um, it doesn't happen frequently, but it does on occasion happen. So I highly encourage the email version. Um, and it takes about three weeks, but realistically, uh, another week on top of that to get get it through. They have to make the cards, process the cards, and then out in the mail. Are there any other questions at this time before she continues? All right. We're okay. up to date. Continue. Okay, so... Uh, one of the things that I did not yet talk about is that there are certain um, levels of conditions. Uh, the conditions, that word bothers me because it sounds like under this, under that. I, I don't like the word, but it's the word we use, so I'm going to explain it to you. You could be found fully eligible or conditionally eligible. Fully eligible individuals, and this will be determined um, in the in the process. Someone who's found fully eligible, you've applied based on what we see from you and your physician, absolutely you're eligible. In fact, you are fully eligible because at this point, it's impossible for you to get to a Metro bus or a Metro train. Um, and we agree. So that's a five-year eligibility. Oftentimes these are folks who, um, they're just having a, a difficult time mobilizing. So they may be using a wheelchair and so new at it that they haven't yet learned how to get comfortable with that wheelchair to get to a bus stop or get on a train. Um, whereas someone who's found conditionally eligible uh, will need to recertify in three years instead of five years. Um, and what is determined is that they have under some conditions, the ability to take a bus or a train. That is left up to the customer, to the applicant, to the individual who's using the service to decide, hmm, based on where I'm going today, do I feel safe to get to the bus that I need to get to or to get to the train that I need to get to? Um, and if that is the case, as long as the individual is able to take one bus or train already at the time that they apply, then they're found conditionally eligible. And they will receive two cards in the mail instead of one. A fully eligible person will get a card. That card um, will have their photo that you all sent into the office and it'll say Metro Access and an expert, your ID number and an expiration date. And that's good for you to show the Metro Access driver when they arrive at your home or your pickup address. If you're not at home, they'll say, may I see your Metro Access card, please? And you show that to them. That's for their safety and yours uh, because it's a shared ride program, which I will address in a moment. Then you get on the vehicle and you go on your way. Um, if you choose to have someone travel with you to assist you in any way, they are your PCA, a personal care attendant. They would not pay, pay a fare. You would pay a fare, which right now is a maximum of $4.50 in one way direction. Um, but if when you book the trip, you say, I am booking a trip for myself and I will have a PCA. And they will always ask you, will anyone be traveling with you? Now, you might have a, a friend coming with you who's just going with you because you're going to go out for dinner together. But they're not a PCA. You can say, yeah, my friend's coming with you. me. I need two seats. They will also pay a $4.50 fare. But if the person coming with you is a personal care attendant, personal care assistant, you can say, yes, I have a personal care assistant coming with me. And you travel for the one fare and they travel at no cost. So it's the same thing if you have conditional eligibility. You travel on Metro Access, you show your ID card, and you can have a PCA come with you as long as you have reserved a seat for them. They won't pay. And if it's a friend, they will pay. Now, the difference is the person who is found conditionally eligible, the implication of the word conditionally there is under certain circumstances, that individual 
is able to go to the bus stop and take a train somewhere. For me, my example that I give is my retina specialist lives on Route 7, Leesburg Pike. It's a eight lanes of traffic to cross just the other side of Tyson's Corner. I don't like going there. I feel vulnerable. This is what I do for a living. I help people learn how to get on buses and trains. And I, I've told people, I'll teach you how to do it, but it makes me nervous and I wouldn't do it if I were in your shoes. So I'm conditionally eligible because when I go to that retina specialist, which I do twice a year, I will take a Metro access vehicle to avoid having to cross that. Now, when I come home from the retina specialist, I'm on the right side of the street. It's one bus ride. I catch the bus in front of their office and I can come home on the bus and walk the three blocks up the hill to my house. So I make that choice because I'd rather be on the bus or the train if I can be. Um, conditionally eligible simply means that under certain circumstances, we feel based on what you've told us, your doctors told us, that you will be safe to travel on the bus and the train when you when you think you will be. So that's the difference. Some people prefer the fully because they only have to recertify every five years. Recertifying is, is so much simpler than your first application. Recertifying is a quick process. But I wanted you to understand that with the conditional eligibility, you will be given a card that looks different that will also serve as a smart trip card. And um, you will also be given a PCA card for someone traveling with you to assist. And that will allow you an opportunity to travel um, at no cost on the bus and the train. Why do we do that? Our board of directors feels very strongly that for those who are able to, under some circumstances, take the bus and the train, that's a win-win for you all and for Metro and for taxpayers, because this is not an inexpensive service to run. That said, this is a civil right. If you're found eligible for it, you use Metro Access every day of the week if that's what works for you and what you need. But if what you wanna do is stretch yourself a little bit and sometimes take the bus and the train, then we can come out and do some travel training with you. Um, or you can just on your own make that decision and we, you, you would be considered conditionally eligible. So any questions on that front? I see a hand up, Ellen Brody. Yeah, Ellen, you can come off of mute. Hi, that's me. Hello. Hi, Ellen. Um, I did not put my hand up. I just wanted to be sure because I have been very frustrated by the process. I am a person who has our members uh, arrange it for them to have transportation by other members. And I always encourage them to fill out the Metro Access form and make an appointment and have a child, if they have a child who lives in the neighborhood, to take them down to apply for the application. So now that we can do this all by email, I can just create a... Um, session for our members telling them bring in your passport bring in your driver's license a non-expired passport a non-expired driver's license if you have one bring in the part b part of the form from your doctor we can fill out the part a in the office and i can scan and um provide all of the information that you've requested from the office, and then a month later, people should be getting their card if they're not iffy. Is is that true? Have I summed yes, all see, of this you, data you summed it up beautifully. Yes, there is no need for folks to go in person to the office unless they would like to. And some people really prefer to do things in person, but mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I think it's much more efficient to do it as we've discussed, and you're. Synopsis is perfect. Excellent, thank you. And the, the only thing I would add, Ellen, is that, and I'm sure you got this in your notes, that those three documents be in the one email. So the, the PDF of the application and the two pictures, one email. And if you would like, you can send it, we'll send it to eligibility at wamata.com. Mm -hmm. 
And if after a month they don't receive something, they can call and say, what's the status? Um, mm -hmm. Or you can call on their behalf. But if you if you would like to, you could put a put the applications to them. But since you're dealing with large numbers, if you would like to put a CC to my email, you Great. could call, call me and I, I'd check on it for you. And uh, I'll give that email now. It's um, B, D as in David, O H E R T as in Tom Y at Wamata at W M A T A dot com. But don't send it to me because I can't I can't put it into I mean don't send it to me. Right. But um because that's not my my bailiwick, but as part of my outreach work, I feel strongly. If you want to check on it, it's just easier for you to call me. I can check that and leave them to do the very important work of getting the things processed. Okay. And will it box up the works if I send the application for the member from my email and um, copy them on the WMATA, uh two part of the email so that um, they will have a copy of everything that I have submitted. It should not come up the works as long as the the in the, in the two line. If you make it to eligibility at wamata dot com, mm -hmm. and then do everyone else, including me, CC. Okay. And that way, it's not confused. It's going to eligibility at wamata.com and it's an application. Right. And you don't you don't have to do a big long letter. No no attachments other than the ones we've discussed. You just say here's a new application on behalf of the person's name. Mm -hmm. That's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. I ask a quick question. Absolutely. Uh, forgive me if, if you mentioned this and I missed it, but what are the, uh, or are there income restriction limits for Metro Access? None whatsoever. This is not a uh, in any way a, a needs-based program. And it is uh, solely, a, it's, a, it's a civil rights program is what it is for those who need it. So no, income has nothing to do with it. That said, once the person, if you're living in the District of Columbia and you have applied for Metro Access and been approved for Metro Access, uh, within a month, your name is it's automatically forwarded by folks in my office to DC Gov. And there's a program within DC, another transit option called Transport DC. And that is a same day service I, I believe they offer, um, if you Googled it, it, it's not my program, but if you Googled it, they would tell you how many trips they offer. I think it's five, which means 10 round trips per month. And it's a $7 flat rate and they will send a cab um, to folks who are Metro Access card holders whose names have been forwarded to Transport DC. So that is very helpful for folks who need same day transport because we cannot do same day service. When I you know that that program has a pretty strict income limit. Um, yeah, well, but not if you're a Metro Access customer. If the Metro have... Access sort of overrides the. Yes, I mean, you can double check with them. My understanding is I know people in the oh, district great. who are, you know, working for the federal government and have any levels of incomes who will occasionally use Transport DC. And it is a strictly income-based, I believe, in other aspects. But if you're a Metro Access card holder, my understanding has been historically, and you can double check with them, but if you're a Metro Access card holder, there aren't. Same here in Fairfax County, there's a subsidized cab program and um, a lift program that will allow folks a sub, it's very, it's income based until you're a Metro Access card holder. If you hold a Metro, the idea being, we do not want people with disabilities or seniors, uh, those of us who are getting older as Cassandra is helping me, uh, with my language, feel that we can't get out and go where we need to go and do it as as efficiently as someone else. 
there's still little glitches, you know, efficiency is not all it's cracked up to be sometimes or what we would wish it to be. But we want people to be able to get out and all the jurisdictions do. We want people to be out and about living their lives, getting where they can go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Uh, I didn't talk too much about the shared ride, so I just want to hit on that briefly. Metro Access is a shared ride program. So one of the reasons uh, folks sometimes get impatient with it, and I understand it, I have done the same myself, is that they might pick me up, take me to an event over at Inova Fairfax Hospital, not far from where I live, and I'm doing a big outreach there, no problem. Um, but before they take me there, they're going to take me to pick up um, John Smith, and John Smith needs to go about 15 minutes out of the way from my destination to his dialysis center. And then they're gonna drop John off, go behind the dialysis center, pick up another person, and then they're taking me to Fairfax. So the trick is this, when I book my rides, it's not a trick, it's just the way I like to plan for myself. I like to get places early because it is a shared ride program. More often than not, there's no one else in the vehicle or there's one other person in the vehicle. There, years ago, I used to have three, four people in the vehicle. Doesn't happen that much any longer. I like to plan to get places early, which means I don't book a doctor's appointment for eight in the morning. I do not wanna be outside a building that's not yet open. So I'll take a book to read, I'll take my phone and listen to podcasts or the, the radio, but I do not like to get somewhere so early that I can't get into the building. So when and if folks become Metro Access um, cardholders eligible for Metro Access, think about how you wanna book your trips so that you get, especially if it's doctor's appointments, you can base it based on an appointment time or based on a pickup time. If you need to be somewhere by a certain time, base it on an appointment time. You're going to a party, it's not so important when you get there necessarily. So, um, and as I said, the, the shared ride is, is very much in effect, but it is, it's typically a low number. You might have one other person, occasionally more, but very rarely these days. Do we have any other questions for Bridget here? Is there any more information you'd like to share, Bridget? I think I've covered it all. I, I, I guess what I'd like to end with is a positive note about the program in that it exists. And what a gift. Metro, when Metro was first built, Metro Rail was first built, it was inaccessible. And a group of individuals with disabilities are my heroes. They chained their wheelchairs together. They blocked entrances. They were in front of the Department of Justice, in front of the Supreme Court. They advocated like crazy on behalf of those of us who are here now. And Metro and they sued Metro. <laughs> Metro was not able to open until they retrofitted every station with elevators. That's why our elevators, especially in, in the district proper and the older stations are in such wackadoo places because they were retrofitted, but they were fitted. And God bless those people. Our system is the most accessible system in the country. And I feel incredibly blessed. For three years, I, I was in a wheelchair and um, I was so nervous at first. But once I got the lay of the land with the wheelchair and I use a long white cane, I was able to travel through the system safely because those existed. And even then in the wheelchair days, I sometimes took Metro Access. I sometimes took Metro Rail and Metro, Metro Bus. Our buses are all accessible. And... Uh, we are here as travel trainers to help folks who would like to expand their independence beyond Metro Access if and when folks become eligible. I know it's a pain in the neck getting the applications in, 
it's that way for, it seems to me, every kind of program out there in the world. The one I'll end with is the Kennedy Center's uh, Reduced Fare Tickets for People with Disabilities and Special Needs. That program, man, you send them a letter, you're in like Flynn and you never recertify. So if you're a theater lovers, art lovers, uh, reach out to the Kennedy Center. But I feel really proud to work at Metro. I'm proud of our accessibility. Bear with us on getting paperwork in. You have my number. I'm going to give it to you one last time. My direct number is 202-570-2447. And Cassandra had put the office number in the chat earlier. And please don't hesitate to reach out. We are here to help you get where you need to go. And I thank you for your questions and in advance for your patience with us. Enjoy this beautiful, low humidity couple of days. Everyone, we want to thank Bridget for this excellent presentation. And I want to apologize ahead of time because the first 20 minutes was not recorded. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, uh, listen, not to worry. I'm going to send you those uh, slides. As I mentioned, I don't typically um, present with slides because I, I'm better off the cuff, but I'm going to just make sure they're all, all I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and I'll send those out so you can share them with this group. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all. In the chat, you'll also see a survey. If you could be so gracious as to complete the survey uh, for us, uh, we'd appreciate that. I'll stay on a little bit longer so that people can find the survey in the chat. It should be one of the last two, three things in the chat um, to give us feedback about this presentation. All right, take care everyone. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hey, Ellen, if you're talking, you're on mute. I still can't hear you. You're on mute, Ellen. Hey, Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. I thought I left the call, so I'm kind of surprised that I'm, I'm not. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know. Um, well, I did submit my, um, um, how many rides? we gave to our members for okay. today. Okay. Um, so that's done. Thank you. And this was wonderful, Cassandra. This was oh, so helpful because I always feel badly because every month I'm writing on that survey, you, you know, when it asks, what did you do? It's like, well, I always tell the members, fill out the form and make an appointment to go to Metro.